Bach's nine years in Weimar was the period of his most brilliant activity as an organist and composer for the organ. And while employed there, he became acknowledged as the greatest organist of his time. It was there that he composed most of his major works for organ, more than 200 of them, not to mention about 40 pieces for clavier, the first of his four suites for lute solo, and the first 27 of his ultimately about 300 known cantatas. Yet Bach left Weimar in disgrace. Even when an official musical history of Weimar was published in 1839, that is, more than 100 years later, there was no entry of the music Bach composed there. And five years after that, when an official history of the city was published, listing the names of the city's court organists, the name Johann Sebastian Bach did not even appear. As late as 1928, Charles Sanford Terry wrote, Not even a street perpetuates his memory, and visitors explore the town with guidebooks that omit his name. A person can say, some people sure know how to hold a grudge. It was not until 1950, while preparing for the commemoration of the 200th anniversary of J.S. Bach's death, that the city of Weimar finally got around to recognizing him. One privilege Bach did enjoy in Weimar was that he was permitted frequent absences to play at other courts and cities, and that was how his reputation and fame grew and spread. Legends began to circulate how all unknown he had visited a village church and coaxed such magnificent sounds out of a wretched instrument that the village organist was known to whisper, this can only be the devil or Bach himself. In 1717, when Sebastian Bach was 32 years old, the Bach family left Weimar for Prince Leopold's backwater principality of Cawthon, all their worldly possessions carted on horse-drawn wagons. Maria Barbara had given birth to six children, Katharina Dorothea, now nine years old, Wilhelm Friedemann, twins Maria Sophia and Johann Christoph, both of whom died soon after birth, Carl Philipp Emanuel and Johann Gottfried Bernard. Prince Leopold was not Lutheran, but instead he was a Calvinist, and according to Calvinist doctrine, instrumental music was not welcome in the church service. Therefore, Bach's duties at Cawthon would lie no longer in sanctifying the church, but rather in exploring music for its own sake. Music that at the time represented the less exalted. Secular music, as opposed to church music, was just beginning to emerge into independent existence. Music 